welcome to the 4i Magazine podcast. I am Federica Bressan, and today we talk about no effort websites with Amit Kalarako, CEO and co founder of the US based startup Fisherman. Let's go. Welcome, Amit. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me, Federica. In 2021, we kind of take it for granted that every small business, every entity would have a website. That is not only not always true, but sometimes websites are not well designed or well promoted. So to start, I would like to ask you as an expert, is having no website at all as bad as having a bad website? It's a great question. And, you know, just to zoom out a little bit and take a look at the numbers in the, in the market in the US alone, where people like you mentioned, really do assume that everyone has a great website, has a website to begin with. Uh, the reality is it's, it's a little over 50%, uh, maybe even closer to 60% of, of small businesses that have either no website at all or who have a website that we consider to be critically outdated, which means it doesn't work on a mobile phone where the majority of website traffic comes from. Um, something's expired, like the domain or hosting or the content is outdated. So the hours of operation are wrong or, you know, the photos are incorrect. Any number of things are, are just wrong about the business. And um, I do think, you know, they carry different issues if you have nothing versus if you have something that's really bad. Um, but more than anything else, you want to drive people to your site and convince them, persuade them to use your services. And so if information is wrong or if it looks bad um, or if it doesn't work on mobile, then that really does create a bad user experience. And it, you know, more, li more than likely persuades the user to use a different company or a different product. So it is something that's very important that you have something and that that something is, is really powerful and, and tells your story the right way. Is it fair to say, just to continue on this line, to think that a business that operates locally needs a website less than somebody that needs to reach an audience also geographically spread out and far away? They think, well, you know, I have my customers. I see them in the face every day coming in. I don't need a website, which is a digital presence, an interface between me and my customers. I just see them every day, so I don't need a website. It's a great question. I mean, traditionally, businesses relied on foot traffic and word of mouth to, to get all their customers. And then once they got their customers, they'd build relationships and, you know, expect those customers to come back. Um, but but the, the problem is that, you know, more recently, um, there have been a lot of alternative options that are online only. And consumers have been shifting a bit towards using those online technologies. And as much as um, the in-person still exists and will continue to exist. Ultimately, a consumer is not going to buy two things for one need. And if they are spending more time online, then that is an opportunity that is lost for businesses that we're traditionally expecting them to come in person. So that in-person element is important, but it's also important that they start to attract customers who are only going to shop online or only going to discover businesses online. And I think, you know, COVID was... Um, has been a really good uh, you know, example of this at, at an extreme level where um, all of a sudden there were pressures for consumers to not go in person at all. And those businesses that didn't have something set up online, they simply weren't able to operate anymore. And you know, that's trends we've been seeing for the last couple of decades already. Um, and you know, obviously COVID is, a, is an anomaly, but uh, it's an example of how it's important for a business to also be able to service folks online. Yeah, I feel that when my questions, actually, I have been embodying sort of a resistant business owner, uh, with asking you the same questions that uh, I would ask you if I were skeptical about buying your service, you know, maybe I don't need a website or, for example, you know, Google already found me and I'm listed there. I don't have my own website, but there's plenty of other websites that automatically collected some of my information. So why do I need to pay or to invest time and effort into having my own website? And yeah. what do you, uh, you know, uh, offer uh, to all businesses and especially these people who you say would actually yeah, not only benefit so as an added value from having a different online presence, but they are being damaged by not having one. Yeah, great question again. So, you Thank know, you. When, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, it's such a great question. I mean, when, when we think about in-person, let's just say a world that isn't online at all, 
Um, when you are walking down the street and you're looking for a business to shop at, to, to become a consumer at, uh, you're making judgment calls based on what you're seeing. It's not just the name of the business, the hours of operation, what the products are. It's also the aesthetic and the ambience and you know the, the general feel that you have for this business. And it's all based on this storefront and um, and the types of people that are there and, and what that experience is, the story that they're telling. There's so much more than just this transactional, here's the product I want and here's this place that has this product. And what we're seeing is online, it's a lot of the same thing. It's you know your online digital storefront. When someone isn't walking down the street, they still want to be able to make a decision based on more than just what are the hours of operation and do they have this product? And so Google is really important. So is Facebook. Um, so as, you know, all these other platforms where you can list your business, it's really important to become visible there, but it's not necessarily enough to persuade someone to choose your business over another. And that's where a website can really tell your story better. It can, um, you know, show images, it can show your brand, um, and it can help you develop more of a direct relationship with that business or with that consumer. Whereas, you know, being on these third party platforms, um, that doesn't really allow you to create direct relationships like you could if you went directly. And from our side, you know, these are all the things that we offer, but we recognize that a lot of these business owners that have traditionally had in-person businesses, they're not necessarily you know, equipped to be able to run a business online. Um, they're already busy enough as it is running something you know, in person and they're not necessarily technically savvy. And so figuring out how to set something up online is really complicated. Um, and being able to operate that online presence is very time consuming. So what we do at Fisherman is we take care of everything for the business. Uh, we call what we're doing no effort. Um, and, and so essentially what our software does is takes as little as a business's name and address. And we are pulling from all these different platforms, things like Google and Facebook and you know, a lot of other um, integrations that we have to produce a complete website for that small business owner in about 90 seconds. And we can also then automatically operate that website for them, help them really develop these relationships with their customers, um, allow them to transact online. Um, we'll sort of manage and operate that entire business and we do it all through our software. Right. I'll jump in right there, if I may, for the audience to understand very clearly that you don't, you're not a website developer per se, right? You don't collect information and go home and do the website for your customers. And you're also nothing like Wix that, you know, kind of makes it easy for non-tech savvy people to build their own website. The website is automatically generated. So there is some AI behind it probably, or that that's what you do. The service is, uh, that's why you call them no effort websites. Can you explain a little more how this happens, how the yes. magic happens? Yeah, that's exactly right. So with Wix and Squarespace and WordPress and all these other platforms, they're meant for you to come in and, you know, drag and drop and build your own website, which is really great for people who are technically savvy, who, who do have time, who know the design that they really want to build. Um, but it because of there's a trade off that's there where for people who aren't any of those things, it's actually quite complex and it's quite difficult. And so um, and then so what we do is we're not manually like an agency building these things. Like you say, a lot of times those agencies cost a lot of money. Um, and that also makes it um, out of touch and out of reach for a lot of small business owners. So basically we consider our software to be like the agency. Our software is sort of like the developer um, that is picking and choosing, you know, the right elements that make sense for this business, as well as the right design that makes sense for that business. And because we're managing the design and the layout for you know, lots and lots of businesses, uh, we can actually see what works and what doesn't. And we, then we can help to and make sure that for all of the businesses that we manage, we're incorporating these things that are working. And so we can sort of live update these websites to make sure that um, you know, they're performing at, at the best you know, that they can. And we don't need the, the small business owner to, to interact um, directly. We can sort of take care of that for them. And what we see is month over month, the amount of traffic we're driving to these websites and the amount of transactions that we're driving on these websites on average is increasing um, pretty substantially. Without the business owner doing anything, every month they're seeing more taking place on their website without them having to, to touch anything. Right, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, you started this business right before COVID. When was it launched? 
Yeah, we had been working on the product. My you know, co-founder and I had been working on the product for almost two years, um, but we launched it right at the beginning of 2020. Um, right. So, uh, so you know, the very before COVID hit is about January of that year is when we first launched the product and we were seeing a little bit of traction. And then obviously when COVID hit, um, the need really exploded. Right, especially because you focus on the food industry, restaurants, dine-in was not possible anymore. Take away maybe some, but home delivery a lot. So these businesses really needed to communicate with their customers in a in a different way. And when you were preparing to launch your business, so not taking even COVID in, in, into consideration, uh, you looked around and maybe you were surprised to see how many businesses did not have a website or actually had an outdated one. And you say, I think they should have one, and you uh, you know bet on this, and you said. I think this is a good idea. I am going to provide this service and you started. Now, since we are a good year and a half uh, into this and with COVID, okay, as a factor, how has it worked out? Where Was your prediction right? Were businesses responding? What are your numbers if you want to share some? Yeah, absolutely. I think for sure the prediction has held to be correct. If anything, it's such a big market that a lot of other companies have also been trying to, to solve these problems more aggressively as COVID took place. So it's a really big market. It's a really big need. And there's you know, definitely a lot of people who are trying to solve the problem. But our approach of doing everything automatically, you know, having something to display and demonstrate up front for someone who thought that it was impossible for them to get something like that um, has really proved to be working. And you know, we, we've been able to work with customers now in all 50 states, as well as Canada. Um, and we've been growing pretty rapidly. Um, as well in, in being able to deliver websites. And you know, some of the cool things that we like to, to talk about are, first of all, um, we can get someone a website in just two minutes and they can be live um, immediately and starting to, and we'll also integrate with Google. So we'll manage their Google presence. And so just within a couple of minutes, they can have a website that is live and it's ready to publish um, and start you know, transacting. Um, you know, the other thing that uh, we really like is uh, we're targeting more businesses that have maybe something online now, since there was a mad rat, a rush um, over the course of the last year and a half to get something online. But a lot of those are really bad and they're not really effective. And so a big focus for us going forward is continuing to help with people who have nothing, maybe they're brand new businesses or for the first time they want to have a website, but also focusing on people who have really outdated sites and figuring out ways to convert those onto our platform. Um, and in that conversion process, we can take the things that are that are useful, um, but we, we can also you know, make sure that these websites are now mobile optimized. We can make sure that the design is more modern um, and we can then take control of making sure um, that this website stays up to date. One last question, just because somehow it seems too good to be true. What if the information that you automatically pull from the internet was not correct to begin with, or what happens when the business owner uh, or who you developed the website for wants to update some information? They need to make the same request that they would probably uh, address an agency. So how do you manage that follow-up then, the maintenance of the websites? Definitely. So we have a dashboard. It's a content editor where a merchant can come in and log in and they can make edits to their website themselves, or, you know, they can actually go directly to our support team um, and they can text them, they can call them, email um, with any changes that they'd like to be made and we'll take care of it for them. Uh, and that team is using the exact same dashboard that the, the customer would be. Um, and our dashboard is a little different from a typical content management system in that it's very, very simple to use. It's again, it's not a drag and drop interface, which just adds a lot of complexity. It's a content editor. And so you can take section by section um, uh, on your site and make the most essential needs. Sometimes a customer's hours of operation are changing or their online ordering information is different and they need to make a change you know, as soon as they can immediately and they can't wait for any turnaround time. So we wanna give them that option to be able to come in and make that change themselves. So we offer a dashboard um, I think a lot of people tend to just use our team um, since they, again, they're not, they don't want to really use technology. And so we give them that option as well. So it's great that you've been working with all 50 states and even Canada, you said. I am speaking to you from Europe. Uh, this seems to be working out really well. Do you have plans to expand 
over to Europe, maybe, or other places? It is absolutely a dream of, of mine and of our team. We actually are a distributed team. We have um, you know, people on our, our team that are based in the US, but also in Latin America. And um, we worked with folks in Europe as well. And so we're, we're continuing to expand our team internationally. And the goal is ultimately that our customers are also international. So it is our, our desire to, to, to do this you know, and expand internationally. We have a few things to, to solve for locally first, but as soon as we do, that'll absolutely be our, our target. And, and hopefully we'll be serving a customer near, near you. Thank you so very much for being on the show. Thank you for your time. Thanks a ton for having me, Federica. I would like to encourage our audience to check out the description of this video for more information on the startup Fisherman. And don't forget to visit the 4i Magazine YouTube channel for more episodes of this podcast. Thank you to my guest today. I am Federica Bressan, and I'll see you next time. So long. Mm -hmm.